my name is Dr. Anthony Lamar, I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to actually see a video in which I perform a surgical drainage of a pericardial fusion, otherwise known as a pericardial window. That's essentially when there's a lot of fluid around the heart and surgically you drain the fluid. Now in a previous video I described the steps of actually performing a pericardial window, but in this video you're actually going to see me operate on a particular patient. Now this patient so happens to be in his mid-50s, he presented with shortness of breath, fatigue, and just overall not feeling his normal self. He underwent an extensive workup, including blood work, EKG, he got a casket of his chest, and that actually showed a large collection of fluid around his heart. He then had a transthoracic echocardiogram, which confirmed the findings of a large amount of fluid around his heart. After discussion with the patient, his family, other medical doctors, we decided that the best approach to getting the fluid out would be through surgery. Now please see this video in which I actually performed that procedure. So right now I've marked out my incision site. I've taken a, a scalpel and I've gotten through the initial skin layer. I then take an electrical cautery device and I divide the tissues. My whole goal is to get down to the xiphoid process, which is the most inferior portion of the sternum. I use a retractor referred to as a Wheatlander to spread the tissues. And then myself and my assistant are, um, are helping to divide the tissue so I can get down to the xiphoid process. Soon I've divided through already the subcutaneous tissue, muscle, and now you're going to see some fat. I use a combination of my finger to mobilize and get the tissue to um, separate. I also use my electrocordery. So right now I'm just using the electrocordery to separate the tissues. I also use my finger. I, when I'm using my finger as well, I'm trying to feel the xiphoid process. Well, now you're getting, I'm getting down to the xiphoid process. That's um, the tissue below the fat. I like using my finger to mobilize the xiphoid too because it's not because I know I'm not going to injure the 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 heart which is underneath the xiphoid process. Now I've grasped the xiphoid process with that instrument, which is referred to as a coker. Now usually once I identify the, the xiphoid process, I like to grab it and resect it in one piece. But in this particular case, I was having difficulty getting it out in one piece. So you're seeing me uh, resect the xiphoid process in multiple pieces here. And when you take out portions of the xiphoid, xiphoid process, which is the bone, it can sometimes lead to bleeding. So you'll see me also um, stopping the bleeding with the electric artery. So I'm just in these images here, dividing the xiphoid process, resecting the xiphoid process, and also making sure that I'm stopping the bleeding that occurs when I take out a portion of the xiphoid process. Now that I got the xiphoid process removed, you're going to be able to see the pericardium. I'm using an instrument to take away the fat and some just some flimsy tissue on top of this, the, the um, pericardium. Now the pericardium is in full view, and it's very important that I grab the pericardium and not injure the heart below it. So it's very important that I can clearly see the pericardium. And I'm not quite happy with my uh, visualization of the pericardium, which is that blue color uh, that you saw briefly. And now I'm going to get another instrument to clear off the um, blood and also some tissue on top of the pericardium. It's very important that I get the pericardium freed up completely and that I can visualize it. I'm going to be entering the pericardium, so I want to make sure I'm not going to injure the heart behind it. So I grab the pericardium. You can clearly see the pericardium right there. That's that blue structure right there. Once I got good visualization of the pericardium, I take my electric artery and I open it. I enter the pericardium. You can now see that there's some fluid coming out. That fluid is the pericardial fusion that the patient had. My suction for a moment there wasn't working. I'm further mobilizing the pericardium away from the remaining sternum, freeing up the pericardium with my finger there. 
I now got the majority of the pericardial fusion drained away, but I want to make sure that my pericardial window, that actual hole in the pericardium, is as wide as possible. And so right now with the electric artery, I'm trying to open up the um, the hole the, uh, in the pericardium. There's some fluid there, so it's hard to use the electric cordery with the fluid with with the fluid around. So now I switch to scissors, and I'm able to with Metabomb scissors to be exact, able to open up that window or the hole in the pericardium. The wider the hole is, the less likely that the fat and other tissues will close it. I want that hole really wide, so all the fluid that's around the heart can go through and be absorbed from the body. So what I'm doing now is I'm just further opening up the pericardial window or opening up the removing pericardium so the window or hole is as wide as possible. Right now I'm just taking out more tissue. Some of that is fat and you'll see me separate here the fat from the pericardium right there. And I'll send that pericardial tissue to be assessed by pathology. After I drain the pericardial effusion, I now get ready to place a drain in the pericardial space. So I made an incision in the uh, skin. That's my 24-blade drain that I'm now going to put around the heart. That drain will stay around the heart for about 48 hours, usually. In this patient, it was a little bit longer, but usually for 48 hours. So it's now a soft drain that's being put behind the heart, and it's going to remove any fluid that's still there. I, I generally... Don't stay in the OR for it that long. So that drain is going to stay there for 48 hours and get any residual fluid. I'm now injecting local anesthesia around the tissue, around the incision site. This way, when the patient wakes up, he's not having too much pain. Next, I'll start to close the incision and also the I'll secure the drain at the correct location. Thank you very much for taking a look at my video where I performed the pericardial window. That entire procedure took about maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but the patient was in the room for about an hour. Approximately three days later, the drain was removed, and then he also went home a day or so after that for some other, because he had other medical issues going on. Now, as I mentioned, there's more than one way to get the fluid out from when you have a pericardial effusion. There is what I just performed, a pericardial window, but there's also something referred to as a pericardiosynthesis, where a cardiologist will use an ultrasound, identify the fluid, and then take a needle and drain the effusion as well. Now, these are low-risk procedures, usually risk of infection and bleeding, but they're low-risk. Um, most people do very well. Now, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.